A will is it's really a, it's a, a legal instrument that just directs what should happen after you pass. And for us, with anyone that has children, it's all about the children because it's not about the value of the estates. I think that's where people get mixed up. You touched yeah. on it just now. It, it's not what you've got, really. It's about who would you want to raise your children if the worst happened, you know? Because if there's no will in place, and it's the only legal document where you can name a guardian, then uh, social services obviously get involved because they've got to look after the best interests of the vulnerable, the children. Uh, children have just lost a parent or parents, uh, obviously extremely distressing time, and there's no direction from anyone. So the parent who loved them to bits during the, their lifetime uh, is not here to make any decisions. You you hear quite often where, especially August, J- June, July, August, we hear it a lot where people say, I'm going on holiday, I've told my sister, if anything happens to me... <laughs> because obviously the plane's going to crash. Uh, if anything happens to me, then she's to look after, you know, my, my son and daughter. Well, it's a bit strange because the son and daughter is on the plane with you, you know, so that's, that's a weird thing to begin yeah. with. But, but it's, uh, it's that thought process of I can just say whoever it is or I can leave a little note. Or, and we've seen them. We've seen notes, paper notes, where people have written, if, if I were to die on holiday, I appoint, you know, my brother. Well, brother may not be the most suitable one in the world, you know. Uh, there's all sorts of reasons to appoint guardians, you know, whether that's on uh, geographic considerations, education, uh, religious beliefs, you know, all sorts of things you need to consider. And sometimes your family are not the best people, are they? It may be a close friend circle you've got. But if you've not given direction to who should do this in a legal way, then the courts will decide. And it's as simple as that. I've genuinely never thought of it like that. Straight away, yeah. when you've said will, I always think money. Yeah. Money and assets. Yeah. I've never once, and that's made me think now, I need a will for my son. Straight yeah. away. <laughs> you said that, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. you know, because it's exactly that. It it's is, like, yeah. you know, there's certain people in my family I hope, who are really close that I wouldn't want my son being brought up by. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. by that, I would definitely want not that not to be decided by the courts. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Because yeah. that would be maybe an immediate, but... You, yeah, you know what I'm trying course. to say? So, yeah, 100%. I, d- I didn't know that. Did no. you ever think of that? No, no. no Never once thought of that with yeah. Archer. Never. So it's, it's framing it in a way that, you know, touches people, I think, rather than just, just money. It, it's about, yeah, those that are nearest and dearest to you, that are minors, you know, they need to be made sure they're, they're looked after. Mm. And again, you know, with, with people who are not married, that's that's even worse situation, really, because... Uh, even with estates, you know, if you if if you've got a partner and you're unmarried, then it doesn't automatically fall to the the surviving partner because you're not married. So why why should you inherit something if you've not tied the knot, as it were, whether that's civil partnership or, or traditional marriage? Uh, so people who are not married need wills more than people who, who aren't. Mm-hmm. Uh, although we would encourage everyone, as soon as you're 18, and I know it's the last thing you want to think about 18, you think about when we were all 18, you know, long time for me now, but you look back and think the will is the last thing. But we've got clients, uh, 18, 19, 20, 21. People think we've only got 80-year-olds or 90-year-olds, but it's it's for everyone, really. It's just it's, it's that thoughtful document to say, if this happens to me, this is where I want it to go. And it's as simple as that. And we make it simple because we talk in plain English and and in an honest way, you know, and, and have proper discussions with them. The other thing with uh, with guardianship as well is that it's the financial implications because it's quite all right to say, well, my three children should go to my sister. Your sister may not be as financially well off as you. So how is she going to raise three three children? And we'll raise that question with people and maybe they should take out a life policy or put that in trust or, you know, we, we're not financial advisors. But so you look at like a whole package for people if that yeah. makes sense. So then it seems part of, but yeah, if they did pass away, oh yeah, it goes to your sister and they get this amount in a life policy and they could look yeah. after the children. Yeah. Whereas if they didn't do that, it's exactly right. Again, it's probably Absolutely. something you would never think about. No. And most of our business comes from uh, financial advisors, accountants, other solicitor practices, uh, any, anybody in a professional sort of setting that, that looks after one aspect of someone's life. We then get referred in, can you do the estate planning? So we'll tidy all that up. But if it's things like life policies, which are really important, uh, we would refer that back to a, you know one of the IFAs we work with and, and, and they would deal with that. So at least you know that the client's getting best advice all the way around. What's know? an IFA? It's an independent financial advisor. Uh, so they, they you know choose from whole of market sort of policies and investments and pensions, that sort of thing. So it's important they get good advice because you know, we're – 
we're, we're top level qualified in the southwest. There's, there's no firm more qualified than us in our niche area. Uh, and that's the sort of advisors we use, you know, for, for our clients to give financial advice because you want to work with somebody similar, don't you? you know, yeah, of course, The same yeah. values and purpose and all that sort of thing as well. But no, it's important. It's really, really important. And it's a dull subject. That's the problem. 